Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series, facilitated by renowned educators. ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Uh, we don't know if this is going to for sure turn out to be a good trade, but the odds are in our favor. And usually, um, you'll see an example at the end of this presentation of exactly what we're talking here today from this, uh, from this morning. Um, when the news, when this is happening, you're going to hear good news. You're going to hear good Fed news if this is the dollar. You're going to see everybody sees an uptrend, and, of course, they want to buy. And if they're buying at a point where the last time prices traded here, there were more sellers than buyers, um, that's the, the novice, buying after a big move up and right into an area where there's more sellers than buyers. And that, again, um, is the key to my trading and put it together with these four stages so that you can identify a trend, and it becomes a pretty simple system. An example from uh, actually um, one of the charts from one of the trades we've taken in our classroom, we identified an area where there were a lot of sellers. Prices couldn't make a new high, big drop away from the area. And on this particular chart, this was probably the open of a Sunday session. Prices gap right up into this area, and... There's still too many sellers up here. Prices decline from the area. So you're selling short a rally into pivot high resistance. And if you're wrong, your stop loss will be above these pivot highs here of the, of the consolidation area. Or if you're buying puts, you've already identified your risk. If you go on to make a new high from here, that's the time to close the trade. The analysis is wrong. Let's review um, the financial crisis, and and first thing I want to say about this picture is, is I'm glad so far this is not the picture. Okay, and the reason I brought these pictures up is because last year, um, this was the this was the talk. This was actually a um, from October of last year, and folks, uh, things really went bad in a hurry. Um, some of the reasons why things went bad in a hurry um, is exactly the cycle that I'm talking about. If you don't think there was a greed cycle in the housing markets when the houses were going up, I mean, this ought to prove it to you, right? And you know what? I don't care what anybody says. As sure as I'm talking to you today, there's going to be another cycle of greed and somebody else making a ton of money off of something and, the, unfortunately, the uh, public usually ends up with the bill when it blows up. So um, just thought I'd bring these little slides in here to remind everybody of where we came from and why. Because of the greed, because of the money that the people that were selling these instruments were making. And all of a sudden, it blew up. And that's how bubbles work. And every time you turn around, it seems like there's another bubble. Okay, So you've got to be prepared for it because... You've already, most of you, if you're listening to me today, you've already seen a stage four decline that absolutely wiped out 10 years of gains in the S&P 500. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm not getting any younger, and uh, my goal is, is if I make money, I want to keep it. And so I want to have a pretty simple set of rules that I follow so that if I make a nice gain, I keep it. So let's review the dollar. Um, in June of 2008, we had been trading in a trading range from March, and we had a big stage four decline that went all the way from November of 2005 into um, early part of 2008. And that's why I mean these trends can continue, especially in the currency markets, for long periods of time. In August of last year, the dollar index broke out of a stage one base and gained over 10% within a month. If you didn't buy a breakout, as I mentioned earlier, in that case, if you didn't buy call options or have some kind of a trade, some kind of a position, that 10% happened uh, before you could even blink your eye. Just like this 40% rally off the lows in the uh, stock market was pretty quick, and it took a lot of people by surprise. November of 2008, we topped out near 90 on the dollar index uh, with a 21% gain against the basket of six currencies that make up that index. So uh, against some of the currencies, we made spectacular gains. I'll actually show you a slide of that in a little bit here. 
all of a sudden the dollar has a sharp correction down to the 80 cent level uh, in December of 2008. By March, the rally resumes again, and we're testing the supply level back up at 90. I think that's the last time I was here and we were talking about it, last presentation I did in March. All right. And then in June, of course, the dollar backs off down to the 79 to 80 level again. So here's that stage one accumulation from 08 that we were talking about, the big breakout into the uptrend. And notice at this 80 level up here, this 88 level, let's call it, on this particular chart, we sort of ran into a big pocket of sellers. And uh, we sort of stalled out for a few weeks on this chart at that point in time. Uh, we had gone past quite a few other areas of selling pockets, and we had managed to rally pretty quickly. But all of a sudden, we traded for a few weeks up at this 88 level, and then we had a big drop. Not surprisingly, we dropped right down to this little period here where we kind of rested for a while, and then we rallied, and we found a little support down there. And we turned around and we started to rally again. Now remember, we could have came crashing down to where the support was, and if the news would have been bad enough, we could have just traded right through here and come all the way back down to the origin of this move at that time. But when you see this area here where you've gone sideways, down sideways and up here for a little period of time, there's usually some leftover buy orders at that level. So in March, when I was here, I said the dollar index has resistance or supply between the 88 and 91 level. Supply represents sell orders that need to be absorbed before price can move higher. If the supply orders are absorbed, then the dollar index could rally up to test the 2005 highs near 92.50. And that's a big if, because I don't know if that's going to happen. If the sellers win the battle, then the dollar index could retest the 79 support. Well, here we were at the end of March. Up here again, there's a lot of patterns that you're looking at. You've got a stage three top from earlier in, in November and December because we closed below this area. So now we know for sure this is a stage three top once this candle closes below here. And then we rallied back up here and we're taking another shot at this um, resistance up here. Now there's only two things that could happen. We could base at this point in time, uh, take out the rest of the sellers here and then rally up to this next level higher up above. Or there's just too many sellers and we could drop from here. And that's the reason that prior slide says, if the supply orders are absorbed, then we can test the old highs near 92.50. But if the sellers win the battle, we probably test the 79 support. And of course, this resistance up here held again. We made a little bit slightly higher high, and then we sold off again. And we had a couple of weeks where we collapsed pretty quickly. We had a little one of those intermediate term counter trend rallies and then another big collapse again. And here we are in the present sitting on this area where it was resistance in the past and it's acting as support here in the future. And remember, I don't know who's going to win this battle here, uh, but um, there's a couple of places where you could enter. If you are aware that this is possibly resistance up here, you could enter up here. You could buy puts up here and they wouldn't be very expensive at all. The worst that could happen is, is you rally past here, and if you if you risk two three hundred dollars on that trade, and it goes past here in a hurry, that's probably going to be a loser. Or you can cut the trade off. Um, one strategy that I know is a pretty popular strategy, if you can do it, is to uh, if you have fifty percent loser on that option trade, close the trade, and try to preserve your capital. Um, and believe me, when when prices are smoking up here and flying up here and rallying really really fast. These puts are not that expensive. Okay, there's a lot of people saying, whoops, I better get out of this trade while I've still got capital left, and they're doing so usually in a panic. As a matter of fact, uh, sometimes the market makers really like this because they get to buy up a whole bunch of puts at a very, very low price. And same thing down here. When we came down to this lower support area, now your calls down at this area are getting pretty cheap too. Okay, where we went down sideways and up, and that becomes some kind of a support area, and that's what the dollar's hanging out at right now. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.